Hey, what's up everyone? Mora Krosin here and I'm super excited about the video here today. We're going to be going over how to teach speed for coaches and we're going to hop in the video right now. Just to give you a quick reference of my background, I started working primarily with individuals, taking them through the whole camera system and being able to improve their throwing form, jumping form, running form, whatever the case may be through that. And then over time, I started to work more with teams and schools and being able to you know, really teach groups in improving primarily speed, but overall performance as well. And so from doing that, I started to be able to develop a set of warm up and stretch drills as well as what to kind of focus on when working with groups. So this is going to be for coaches that might be coaching like football, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, you know, just a general coach. Even if you're track, you'll still be able to get improvement from this. But, you know, a lot more of it's going to be like the team sports where you're going to really see a a lot of value with this video. Okay, so we're just gonna start with just some basic stretches. I'm much more of the type of person that likes to have like an active stretch, not too much of like a static stretch or, or dynamic, right? So I wanna be moving around here. You can see, you know, starting off driving the knees and every three step, touching the toe, getting the hamstrings going. An adductor stretch, I do think the warm up is super important and when you are really trying to work on speed, and I know there's a few things that, you know, a lot of you guys, a lot of coaches know what they're doing here. Uh, but there might be a couple exercises that could end up benefiting you. So I just thought I'd go through and just give you a little bit more of like what my routine is. Like here, I, I really lean forward. I'm pulling my heel to my butt and kind of lean forward to get some balance and a little bit more stretch. Here, I'm just working the outside part of the hip, stretching the what's called piriformis muscle. Here's just like a backside uh, walkout. Achilles walkout is really what you call it, where you walk out with the hands and bring the feet up from there working out that really the Achilles hamstring everything and then we're going to go into some high knees you don't have to do these in order then just some butt kicks this is a world's greatest stretch here going elbow to the end step and then rotating the, the thoracic spine and we're just going quick little scissors here trying to keep those toes up this is a great one if you're not doing this with your athletes i'd really recommend you guys doing this this is just going to be power skips you know just working on being able to get as much vertical force as we can and then just some bounding coming back being really quick and forceful with how our foot's touching the ground trying to keep that toe up then just some lateral skaters again this is going to be much more for any type of field sport um you know or, or even like a tennis or something like that just because you're going to get more lateral movement not as important for you know like a track straight line running type of thing single leg squats this one's really important you can even see for me on my first one here i didn't have great form on that left side as i was going through i started getting a little bit better but most importantly just being able to work on that range of motion through the ankle through the knee stabilizing in in both sides i usually do three on each side and then going right into some ankle jumps here. You know, again, if you guys don't do any of these, that is, I mean, I'm sure you guys do some of these, but if any of them, you know, fit into your schedule and you can work on it, I highly recommend it. Broad jumps is a great one. Teaches you how to load with it with your arms, right? Getting those arms back and being able to jump, create a lot of explosion. I think that's a super great one to do. B skips, I really only do B skips. I don't really do A skips. I don't think those are as important but b skips i do like to do just because it teaches that good front side mechanics and being able to pull down and then we're just doing some longer scissors i call them here just really trying to reach all the way up and trying to get that pull down from behind and then just a couple wall drills here working on opening up the groin i love this one and then just some leg cycles here when you're doing this you do want to make it so the inside leg is the leg that's coming up and then you're pulling back with that outside arm so you don't want to do this and then just switch legs here. You'd want to have them all switch sides and then go from that that way, right? So it's important to be able to get that pull back here. So it's important to teach the athlete pulling with that right arm and with that left leg simultaneously in that, that leg cycle. All right, so now we're gonna go into some of the key concepts that I think are super important to, to teach. Uh, and the first one's going to be fast foot contact time. The second is gonna be fast turnover. The third's gonna be good posture. And then the fourth's gonna be arm swing. And these are things that are going to be consistently taught throughout your training sessions, right? Whenever you're going to be working with a group of athletes, every single time, you're gonna be continuing to reiterate this. Some days, you know, some of them 
are able to connect with it a little bit better. Other days, it's not as, as clean. You just wanna be able to maintain a very high standard for what each one of these four look like to make it so then you're gonna get consistent speed improvement, right? You're, you're gonna be able to, you know, with a lot of your teams, just by working on these four things, you should see some pretty drastic improvements in just one week. But really, you know, if you keep on staying consistent with some of those workout drills that we just went over, as well as giving them these cues when you're, you're talking to them, it will make a huge impact in the over course of like three months, uh, four months, five months, whatever the case may be. So first is gonna be fast foot contact. So let me go through here. So that's just when you're, the, the foot's hitting the ground, making it so it's very, very quick when that foot's hitting the ground, right? We don't wanna spend a lot of extra time on the ground. And you can really notice that if the athletes are landing with their foot way too far out in front of them, notice how my foot wants to be like right underneath the hip. That's the goal is to pull, tell them and, and to coach them up on getting the foot right underneath the hip to make it so then they can spend the least amount of time on the ground as possible. And then the next thing is going to be fast turnover, right? And so when you're come, talking about that, well, there's two important parts and this goes back into the fast foot contact, right? So as soon as that foot gets back behind the hip, I always say you wanna be thinking about getting that foot off the ground, right? So right in here, you wanna be getting the foot off the ground as fast as you can, because what we'll see is athletes will really allow that foot to get too far back behind them. So there's two common reasons why the foot is on the ground for too long. One's gonna be the foot, it lands too far out in front. The other is it takes too long to push off, right? So we really wanna be fast and being able to push off the ground there to make it so then we can have an effective leg cycle because if we allow the foot to get too far back behind, then we have to pull the foot back in, into our front side mechanics with the foot way back behind us, right? So it's important, that's why we do the leg cycle, to be able to teach the athletes that when their foot comes off the ground, to immediately drive that foot forward, right? Notice how there's not any time spent with my foot coming straight up, it's immediately coming right back underneath, right? And I'm immediately bending that knee to make it so I can drive forward for that next step. So now I have enough time to get that foot out in front and being able to work on my cycle, okay? So what ends up happening is that when, got, when, when athletes have that foot on the ground for too long and it gets too far back behind them, then they really lose the front side mechanics and the ability to pull down and create a lot of ground force into the ground. So we wanna be able to coach them up on what that should look like. Another common thing is going to be posture, right? And so, and, and all this ends up going into each other. So if you have somebody that might be struggling with their posture, you know, maybe extending or, or leaning pretty far forward with their spine, most common uh, problem, then usually that also is the same type of athlete that will have their foot way back behind them, right? So you want to be able to maintain an upright position in the spine and still have plenty of range of motion to be able to get good extension and also flexion, right? So you don't want to be seeing too much movement in the spine as they're running, right? So see how as I'm going, my spine stays pretty stagnant. There's a little bit of like a forward bend or forward movement as I'm pulling my foot underneath. But for the most part, everything is staying pretty stagnant within my spine, which will allow my legs to be able to be as efficient as possible. If you're moving too much in the spine, whether it's forward and back or side to side, uh, or rotating a, a whole bunch, and that'll make it so then you'll shorten up your cycle with your legs, which will make it so then you won't be able to pick up as much ground, which will impact your overall speed. So you wanna be nice and stable within that upper half, so then you have plenty of range within the lower half, okay? The last is gonna be the arm swing, right? This is, is pretty easy to be able to recognize, right? If the elbows are getting really far away, you wanna get that, that hand to be, you know, about eight inches behind the hip, right? So see where my hand is there. You don't have to keep this arm at a 90 degrees, but you do wanna just make sure that, that that hand gets behind the hip by at least, you know, eight inches, you know? So if you need to extend that elbow out a little bit more because there's not enough shoulder range of motion, that's fine, we need to get that range with the, with the hand. And then we also wanna get that other hand to get up to at least like the mouth nose height, right? You don't wanna get it too high up above the head. So we wanna get it probably about to nose height is, is good enough there. And then just trying to optimize coming straight up there and not really breaking too much with the elbow. So I see a lot of guys that will bring that hand like all the way up and start bending a lot with the elbows as they're running. You wanna be pretty locked in with the, with the arms there, um, but just making sure that you're not losing speed because you don't have the right around, amount of range within the arms, right? And what's important is just to go over the how and why, right? That's why I'm talking to you about all this here is because 
it all wants to relate back to how it's going to get you faster and why it's going to get you faster. Because I think a lot of athletes really, you know, they, they want to understand why they're doing certain drills, right? Certain exercises. So if they don't understand how it all correlates, then it's harder to be able to get as much buy-in. But if you can explain to them, you know, the um, foot contact time and how important that is, the turnover time and, you know, what that is and, you know, how it's important, why it's going to translate, the same with posture, the same with arm swing, you're going to get a lot more overall buy-in. And, you know, that's really important when it comes to being able to get everybody on the same page of running faster. So I really like to go into different degrees of detail when coaching. I'm not always saying the same thing every single time. I'm always putting a different focus on different parts of running. Uh, and I also am making it so it's very active, right? So I don't expect them to be perfect every time. And on certain days, I might put a bigger focus on foot contact time, making sure that that looks great. The other days, turnover time, other days, posture, other days, um, being able to understand the arm swing. So I don't go over all four things and just flood them with a whole bunch of information, expect them to be able to take all that information, understand it, apply it, and get amazing results. Again, um, you're gonna be able to make a good difference over the course of week. Let's say you work meet with them four days, every day you put a different emphasis on those four areas. They should make an improvement on each one of those areas within those four days. And you know, just continue to reiterate it each time. So even on day one, if you put a big focus on the foot contact time and being able to go through that over the sprinting, on day two, even though the focus is on turnover speed, we don't want to get away from the foot contact time. And then on day three, when we get into posture, we don't want to get away from the foot contact time and the turnover speed. And then day four with the arm swing, the again, the all three of the, the previous days don't want to end up being wasted. So we just want to be able to reiterate some of the things that we went to earlier on in the week when we're progressing through. And then as we're continuing to push the pace with some of the running workouts, we want to be able to put a big focus on having a, again, high expectations for each part of the, the running phases and making sure that they understand it and for coming up with different cues to be able to allow them to connect to what the result wants to be in order to really get, again, continual buy-in and continual motivation for the athletes. So the big thing here that I'm, I'm really putting a big focus on is going to be what's called the drive phase or your speed building phase, right? So you can see I, I started off here at the beginning and really after the first three steps, those are kind of like your start steps. Then it goes into your drive phase and really your ability to build speed. And when it comes to building speed, what you want to be able to do is you want to have a slow improvement within the spine angle, right? So as my foot's getting further and further out in front, I'm slowly starting to bring my spine up more and more. I want to also put a big emphasis on having what's called a low heel recovery. So I don't want to allow that foot to get too high up behind me. I want to keep my foot really low to the ground so then I can really reach with my feet out. Right, and then each one of these steps, I really wanna be putting a focus on going out with my foot, right? And not too much going up with my knee, okay? So I'm really focusing on, on my foot going out while I'm maintaining a little bit more of a forward position with my, my spine as I'm slowly building to a top end speed position. So working on, on really building your speed for a longer period of time is gonna be critical for these athletes to be able to really get to understand what getting to top speed's like, right? So I see a lot of people that struggle, especially with, I work with a lot of football guys. So, you know, with the start, they get into their position and immediately wanna pop right up. Right, and we see a lot of athletes that, you know, no matter what the sport is, they immediately want to get to their top end speed position, right? And what that does is that just makes it so you have to put a lot of more energy into your body in order to get less of an output, right? So what we want to be able to do is put less energy and get more output, right? So we want to be able to flip that. And the way to do that is to maintain a great body position and to really work on that drive phase. So I think that's a really underrated part of working on speed is being able to improve the drive phase and make it so athletes understand that it's about building up to a top speed, right? So it's not going to be from, you know, going five miles an hour to going 50 miles an hour. Or obviously, there's nobody sprinting 50 miles an hour, but whatever, 20 miles an hour, whatever the case may be, 15, whatever their top end speed, it's not going to go from just you know, five or six to be able to get to 15. It's gonna be, you know, five to six to seven to eight to nine to 10 
to, you know, everything you're going to have to build your way up there. You might be able to go from 10 to 12 or from 12 to 14, but we're not going to be able to go from five miles an hour to 12 miles. You know, it's just not a possible thing to do. You're going to have to slowly build up. Even a car, you're going to slowly build up. So it doesn't make sense to immediately get in from a position where you're bent over to immediately get into a top speed position without, you know, having some degree of buildup and not understanding, you know, what that buildup is going to look like. So the key thing with, with teaching that, again, has to do with the spine angle and has to do with keeping that low heel recovery. And that will really help them understand how to be able to build it up. And then you want to just allow them time to be able to practice it because not everybody's going to have the same drive phase. Everybody's going to be different in how they're building speed. But if they don't understand that this is something that they need to be able to work on and control and get feedback from, then they won't be able to implement it into a game or practice situation or whatever. So just being able to work on this, I think it's great to be able to help them improving their top end speed, right? The end goal is to make it so they're faster. And so if we can help teach them how to build up their speed, it'll make it so then they're going to be able to get to their top speed more fast. Effectively. Another big thing is going to be, I guess we can go into three things. Another thing is going to be like flies, right? Working on, on being able to have bursts and then also slowing down, right? So holding top speed is going to be, you know, let's say we want to work on holding top speed for 40 yards or for, you know, 40 steps or something like that, right? Just being able to maintain top speed for a good amount of time. I think that's a great way to be able to develop speed and a good thing to be able to do, um, not necessarily like the beginning of a training session, but you know, maybe at the middle or something like that, after they warm up, you want to be able to have some degree of speed training that you're doing and doing this, you know, once, maybe twice a week at the most is going to be effective for them, you know, as, as well as some of the other training practices that they'll have going. Another great one to do is going to be the flies, right? And so that's going to be, you know, maybe building up for 20 yards, sprinting for 20 yards, and then slowing down for 20 or building up for 20, sprinting for 10, and then slowing down for 20, right? The point is to be able to have, you know, like some 10 or 20 yard flies where they're running full speed, okay? And being able to work on that. 10 is probably better overall, um, just to be able to really allow them the opportunity to sprint as fast as they can. And then it's important to also be able to, like I said, slow down, right? So you want to work on their ability to actually slow down and control slowing down. Some of them, you know, at the very beginning, when you're just teaching some of this stuff, it's going to be more, you know, longer period of time before you can allow them to actually slow down, right? So give them 20 yards to slow down or whatever the case may be. But over a period of time, as they start getting better at sprinting, you want to be able to add in some stuff where they need to slow down quickly, right? Give them less time to be able to slow down and then maybe have them cut, change direction. You know, first just have them slow down and stop and be in a good, you know, hips down position, have one foot forward, things like that. So you really want to be able to work on allowing them the opportunity to understand how to do that as effectively as they can. And then from there, we'll be able to get them to be able to move kind of side to side and, and create some additional ways for them to be challenged in slowing down. But you don't only want to teach them how to speed up. You also want to teach them to how to slow down. And the better you can get them to understand how to slow down, it will directly impact how well they're able to actually reach their top speed as well. So it's going to hugely benefit you as well as also keeping them healthy. A lot of athletes don't understand how to slow down very well from their top speed. And because of that, it really has a negative impact on their ability to, you know, transfer some of the information that we're able to do onto the field because, you know, they're not able to slow themselves down. So now when they get on the field, they don't feel as comfortable getting to their top speed because they don't know how to control themselves when they get there. So working on the control and working on that deceleration is a great thing to be able to do in order to help them with their their sprinting then the last thing that i think is super important to be able to help out is going to be developing a great core routine that you do and you just want to do this on a fairly routinely basis so you know with me personally i have my athletes do some core every single day uh, i do a lot of different flutter kicks and v-ups and, and things like that um, planks are going to be a great thing to help develop speed. You just want to have something that they're always doing because the more they can develop core strength, again, that's going to help them out from a injury prevention standpoint, as well as helping them build up their top speed. So that's a great thing to do. And then another important thing to do is going to be have some type of cool down stretch. This is something that I don't see very many people do, but I think is hugely valuable for the athlete to afterwards when they're done, have something to do to actually cool. And then for these, this wants to be really more of a static stretch. So, you know, hamstring stretch, hip flexor stretch, pigeon stretch, Achilles stretch, things that are gonna be 
very, very simple to do, something to maybe kind of cool down. They can kind of hang out with their friends a little bit, laugh, joke around, but we're also still stretching as well. Some back stuff, we do different types of scorpions, things like that. If you guys have any questions about that, you can send me an email. I'll be happy to send you over some of these stretches that I do. But, you know, again, these are gonna be some super easy things that should take five minutes at the most, but will really make a big difference over the course of three, four, five months as your athletes continue to get more flexibility, or even more importantly, they don't lose the flexibility that they have right now so core and cool down i think is a huge thing to be able to add in as well in order to help everybody out so as always guys thanks for watching the video if you like the information click that thumbs up down below that really helps us out a ton subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you have any questions comments recommendations you can leave those down below and then also check out the description to see some of the things that we are offering for free we do have a seven day trial for our speed program or our free ebook or five ways to get faster this is going to be for a little bit different audience overall but if you want to get some more individual stuff, then you can check out all that down below. Uh, and then if you also want to work with us with, from a team perspective, we'd be happy to do that. I'll leave that in the description down below. Or it would be easier to probably contact me through the email, which is in the description as well. And then we also have a few different programs available for you too. I would highly recommend you getting a speed breakdown. Maybe not for you, but maybe for one of your athletes. If you're looking to get some specific coaching on how they can get faster and improve their speed, we'd be happy to do that. And we do have group rates for that as well. Uh, again, reach out to me personally and we'll be able to go over stuff like that so as always guys thanks for watching if you're still watching right now click that thumbs up it really does help us out a ton and we'll talk to you soon